Kamsamida. Um, thank you for coming to this talk. I'm uh, TB Raman from Google. Um, during the next 20 minutes, I'd like to talk to you about the profound impact that the work we all do in the world of electronic information, mobile computing, and cloud-based information access has on how each one of us works and plays and participates fully in society. Uh, the theme of this conference is coexistence, and I want to highlight the various aspects along which coexistence among different languages, different cultures, different abilities gets enabled by the work all of us do. I'll flip to the outline slide of my talk. Um, to give you a brief overview of this talk, uh, we'll talk um, for a few minutes about where we've come from so that we all get a sense of perspective on where it is we are going. Because in our field, things move very fast. And all of us are in the thick of things on a daily basis. So we tend to lose our sense of perspective. So talk a little bit about the background and why we are also excited about the work we do. Um, then move on to a tech section where we'll talk about technology um, and what, the, what today's technology enables. And then lead that on to the work we do at Google in terms of making some of this vision a reality. Um, the, I'd like to leave you with a sense of excitement about what happens in how we work, play, and communicate when what I call the three legs of today's information age come together. Uh, all of the world's information in the cloud, accessible from everywhere and to everyone. Accessible via a variety of devices and end user interfaces that are suited to each and every user's needs. That's the wonderful thing about the mobile. And the third leg of this, which is ubiquitous availability, anywhere, anytime availability of all of this information, which is what we get from 24x7 networking. So I personally find the space extremely exciting. I started working in this area as a grad student almost 20 years ago. And um, timing is everything, right? Um, as I started my grad school was also when the World Wide Web started taking off. And it's been a very exciting journey so far. And to the conclusion, I will give you a sense of the best is yet to come. So let's flip to the first section of this talk and talk about what I call universal access. So what is universal access? I'll flip to the first slide in that section. So to me, universal access is a significant underlying theme in Google's corporate mission, which is access to all of the world's information. But access to all of the world's information, how? As users, you want access to all of that information at any given time, any time access. This goes back to ever-present connectivity. Uh, you want access to that information in the manner that you want. So if you are driving, you want that information spoken to you. If you are in a new country where you don't speak the local language, you want that information translated to you. If you are blind and you need information in Braille or you need, it, need written information spoken to you, you want it spoken to you. If you are deaf and you are listening to a talk, you want that talk automatically captioned for you. Um, so you want access to the information when you want, where you want, and how you want. That's really the dream of universal access. Let's flip to the next slide and take a little breather and sort of remember how the world looked like before we all moved to electronic information. So in that prior world, we um, exchanged information by putting them down on paper, right? You wrote a letter to a friend. You printed an article. Now remember, even that 400 years ago was a huge revolution with the invention of the printing press. Right? Suddenly, everybody could print their ideas and disseminate them. And that was a huge revolution at the time of Gutenberg 400 years ago. But that had its inherent shortcomings. When we created information in that previous age, it required a human to look at that information before that information came back to life. So if you typed out a letter and mailed it to me, you assumed that I could see that paper and read your, the characters you had typed and understand the script and understand the language. Electronic information does something profound. Let's flip to the next slide. Um, 
Electronic information, when information goes electronic, when information turns from physical atoms, as in a piece of paper, to electronic bits that come down a wire, something profound happens. When, you're, when information goes electronic, you separate the message from the medium. And by separating the message from the medium, that message then becomes available for further processing, for further computing, um, and that leads to all kinds of fun things, right? So suddenly you can take an electronic newspaper, deliver it to a mobile phone, and look at it on a small screen. But then there's more. If your electronic information is designed well, um, you can not only look at that on the phone, um, a blind user can listen to it. A car person in a car driving can listen to it. A, a blind user who's using a braille display can feel it on his braille display. So it's a profoundly liberating thing. You can translate information to multiple formats, all kinds of good things happen. And so that really is what got me excited when I started working in the space 20 years ago. The power of having information that can be computed upon the power of having computers that were powerful enough to compute on all of the world's information. And then finally, the ability to deliver that information to the user through a variety of powerful devices. So that's the sense of perspective I'd like to build. Now let's flip to the next slide and talk about technology. Um, so what can today's technology do for us, right? We've had um, about 17, 20 years of the World Wide Web. Um, we uh, flip to the next slide in that section. We have this is what I call progress at internet speed. This is a term that was coined in the early 90s when the web was moving very fast, and we still continue to see that. Look at what we've achieved as an industry in the last 18 years. Uh, we have access to a lot of the world's information online, and there's more coming online all the time. Look at the devices we have. The mobile revolution is absolutely amazing. This little phone I have in my pocket, it's processor, it's, it's got a dual core processor, it's got a gig of RAM, next year it'll probably have a quad core processor. Um, but that's not just the mo most exciting aspect of it. These devices are very aware, they are very capable of becoming aware of your environment. So your phone has a camera, it can see. It has a microphone, it can hear. Um, it has a speaker, it can talk to you. It has a vibration motor in it, so you can give you haptic feedback. Um, and what that does to how we as humans interact with machines drastically changes. So in that boring old PC era, right, the PC sat in the corner of the room over there. There was a boring keyboard and a monitor. And if you wanted something, you went to the PC. Uh, the mobile device is with you. What's more exciting is that because it is so aware of your environment and can sense your environment, you can avoid a lot of the boring user interaction you had to do in order to get your answer. This makes things very, very exciting. Let's flip to the next slide, which is the web as a platform. Now, this is what I call timing in our industry, right? All of these things are coming together at the same time. The web platform is enormously powerful. It's an open platform. It allows publishers and consumers to come together. You publish content. Everybody can access content. And this is the secret, right? You are not, you as, because the web is a global system, you do not know who your user is. So you cannot assume that the user can see perfectly well or can see color or whatever. And the more you do in terms of making sure that what you put on the web works for everyone, the better you stand a chance of reaching, reaching the widest possible audience. So the web as a platform then becomes this giant enabler. Um, at Google, everything we do is on the web. We are a web-based, the web made Google, right? Without the web, you wouldn't have had a Google. And that's something that we've continued to build on. And so. It's a very exciting place to work because all of these groups at Google are building wonderful things on the web that you'll hear about. Um, flip to my next slide. Um, my own group focuses on what I call eyes-free interaction. It's a term that I chose intentionally because I didn't want the work that we were doing to be limited to just blind users. Uh, we felt that the work that you do, if you do it well, can help all users and actually move 
the whole industry forward with respect to how we work with these devices. So we work on ice interaction with the idea that user interfaces can be built for that scenario when you're not looking at the screen and do a really good job. Let's start talking about some of the Google services that actually help further this vision. Um, flip to the first slide in that section. So when you say Google, you think search. Search is what made, makes Google tick. Search is what created Google. But today, search and searching all of the world's information has taken on a whole new meaning for us. Once upon a time, we searched the information that was on the web that had been put up by people on the web. Today, we actively participate in bringing information online. But as we bring information online, we continue to focus on the user and the essence of search. What is that? That is finding the right answer for the user. Fast, timely access, relevant access, and effective access. And each of these plays directly towards the notion of universal access and more, more richer communication among people. Because at the end of the day, information is how we as people exchange ideas. And the thing to focus about what we do in today's generation, economists have a, have a concept called the velocity of currency. So in a very active economy, currency has a very high velocity. It moves very fast, right? It's a lot of trade. You give me some money, I buy something from you, um, then you know, I sell it to the next person. In an active economy, you have a very high velocity of currency. In today's information age, there is a, in every unit of information has very high velocity. And that's something to remember and as we think about equal access, this is why it's really important to ensure that everyone has equal access to that information. Because if you don't have access to it, you will get left behind. On the flip side, if you enable better access to it, then progress gets much quicker. Let's look at some of the Google services that enable us to further this mission. Um, Google Books. So Google Books is focused on bringing all of the world's books online. So suddenly, some great thought, some great idea that is trapped in a stack of paper on some library bookshelf can come to life and be made available to anyone anywhere in the world in any form they choose. That's enormously empowering. YouTube, right? Bringing the world's video online. But what is the impact that has? It has a profound impact way above you know, way over and above what traditional media and traditional television achieves. So um, information that's there online as video can then, you know, you can run a speech recognizer on it and, and provide captions to someone who cannot hear. This talk is being streamed on the web. Uh, it's not just accessible to you here in the room. It's accessible everywhere. In fact, I, my wife is watching it from California. Um, what our technology enables today in terms of people communicating, communicating effectively, and communicating rapidly. And what our technology enables us to do while we do that to ensure that every citizen, every human can participate, independent of that individual's needs and abilities, is enormously empowering. So Google Maps is another great example of Google bringing information, bringing the world online, as it were, right? So, Today, with Google Maps, I can take my phone out of my pocket in any city in the world and actually feel the layout of streets for any city where Google Maps is fully available. It is enormously empowering. Five years ago, that would have been the realm of science fiction. As we talk about all this today, I want us to celebrate where we, what we've achieved, but not just celebrate what we've achieved, but think about what we've achieved as a motivator for what we can achieve in the next 10 years. Flip to the next slide, which is the accessible on-ramp to information. So then what do we at Google do, and what does my team at Google specifically do? So our industry as a whole is on this race to get all of the world's information online and make it available from everywhere and increase how well we all cooperate, coexist, communicate. My own team, we focus on making sure that that on-ramp to the cloud is accessible to all users, that we focus on the user's need, 
And this is sort of a theme that runs throughout Google. You focus on the user and then everything else works. Because at the end of the day, the users determine whether what you build works or not. Um, flip to the final section of the talk, which is the conclusion section. So I sort of think of this as the looking forward, looking back section. I've been trying for the last 15 minutes to leave you with a sense of excitement of where we are as an industry. Think about wh where we have come and think about where we could go. Uh, with the devices in our pockets that have this rich variety of sensors, uh, they have the ability to process the world around you for you. So today I cannot see, so I cannot see the signs on the wall here. But my phone has a camera, and it can see. Um, and not only can it see, but because of networking, it is connected to a very, very powerful engine behind it called the cloud. That's its brains. So its eyes and ears are on the device. Its brains are in the cloud. That cloud is all of that world's knowledge and information. And start asking yourself what you can achieve with that. You can imagine waving your phone around and as a blind user listening to the signs around you. But that's not technology that's just relevant to a blind user because for most tourists who come to Seoul and can't read and speak Korean, you can actually wave your device around and read a sign and understand it. This is enormously empowering in terms of bringing people together and going that next step in coexistence, which is further increasing the velocity of information. Speech, the same thing, right? Um, you have good quality speech recognition. You have good quality natural language translation. You have good quality synthesis. That enables different cultures and different languages to communicate better. When we communicate better, we understand one another. And the more we communicate, the more we realize that we are all like one another. Um, so what this technology gives us and what we can do in the next 15 years is very, very exciting. Flip to the next slide. Um, so in conclusion, um, this industry that we are building, this information age that we are all part of, is founded on three legs. It's founded on all of the world's information being available to you via an open cloud platform that is accessible from wherever you are, whenever you want it, and in the form that you want. That makes it accessible to everyone in the world, independent of their abilities, independent of their differences. Over time, that access actually eliminates the differences between people. So when I send you an email message, and you read it, and you respond to it, you do not realize that I couldn't see when I typed that message to you, nor should you care. That is an example of where technology eliminates the differences between people and brings us together. Um, as I say, we, we are living at a cusp of a technology revolution that is very exciting, and the opportunities are huge. Uh, let me flip to my final slide. Um, that slide shows my guide dog sitting on the uh, cockpit seat of a 747. Um, if there is time, I'll take questions. Otherwise, thank you for your attention. Kamsamida.